We have to say our name and what it's about. And now what do I write on here? Hi, I'm Ashley. And I'm Arabella. And we're gonna introduce you to our show, Lily and Anne. Anne. You have to let me say some stuff and you say some stuff. Hi, I'm Ashley. And I'm Arabella. Welcome to Intro with Ashley and Arabella. I mean, I mean we should just say our names faster. I'm Ashley. I'm Arabella. I'm a little concerned that Henry never texted me. I thought that date went really well. It did. I think it did. Was that the date where you where you covered the neck brace? Uh, I like your hijab. My what? Your hijab. Oh, my head job. My head job. <laughs> it's it's a scarf. It's like a is that what you call it in England? A head job. I like a head job. No. I try to help you, but you make it so hard. Do you think he's gay? I'm Ashley. And I'm Arabella. I'm five foot seven. And I'm... You are not! We'd like to introduce you to a show called Lily... <coughs> Anne! What? What? Oh my god, that is a gorgeous gown. Oh, thank you. You like it? I wanted to show you. I just got it on sale. Guess how much it cost. Guess. Listen, I'm really concerned that our living situation is going to be a problem. What happened? <sighs> Sorry. There you go, Lily. 36F. That's Joan Cauldron's apartment. Yeah. Yeah. I should introduce myself. Uh, I'm Elvis. My father owns this building. Okay, what's the worst that could happen? He could tell his dad, and then we get kicked out of here because we're subletting illegally, and then we just live on the street. We have nowhere to go. Or he just goes on with his day, being the landlord's son. <laughs> Hi. How can I help you? Is is Joan here? No, sorry. Um, and who are you? I'm Anne. Is there a girl named Lily living here? No. No, Joan lives here. I'm just, I'm Joan's cleaning lady. Sure don't look like a cleaning lady, I must say. Well, yeah. Thank you. Actually just come in for a minute and wait for Joan to get back. You know what, actually- Anne? <sighs> Anne, Anne, my God, we have a lot to do. We have, we have a ton of cleanup, we have we got dust, we got, we got mites, we have... Hi, Anne, we have mites. What's it like to live with your best friend? Imagine, if you will, waking up every morning with music and sunshine and laughter and play. And sometimes you get on each other's nerves and sometimes you fight. And but sometimes you don't. Yeah, sometimes you don't, but sometimes you do. And sometimes you don't. And it's a really special time because if you're lucky enough to have it, You had nothing to add. You started that sentence and you had nowhere to go. <laughs> She's right. I got herb garden. What? You don't like it? It's not clutter. We can just put it wherever. It's tiny. Dang, 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 dang. You know what? I'm happy that I'm single. No, yeah, I know. Me too. But this is like zero commitment. Like, I have nowhere to be right now. I have no one to answer to. I'm just a free agent, and I, I really I don't feel like I need a boyfriend in my life right now. Despite what my parents say. Oh God, did they talk about your eggs again? Yeah. They told you that you have to have them frozen? Yeah. Did you say eggs or eggs? I'm actually, I'm not scared of being alone. Uh, hello? You're not alone. You got me. And our cilantro plant. That's not cilantro. No, it's not cilantro. It's cilantro. That's just a plant. What I am scared of is is ending up with like Mr. 80%. Who's Mr. 80%? That guy who's just perfect. Like he's like perfect on paper, but he's actually he's like 80% perfect, you know? So you go on a date with him because he's great and then it turns into five dates and then you're engaged and then you're married with three kids and then you're 50 and you're lying next to this guy and you're like, oh my God, you're, you're great, but you're just not great for me. And then you have to make a choice when you're 50 to either like start your life over again or do I want to stay in this loveless, lifeless, colorless marriage? You know what we have to do? We have to just be specific about what we do want so that we don't end up with an almoster. Right. We're going to make a soulmate list. What's a soulmate list? You make a list of all the traits that you want in a soulmate and then you send it out into the universe and then the universe manifests said person. So the first thing we have to do is we have to make a list of all the specific things that we want in a soulmate. Annie, specific. We have to be very, very specific. You have to take this seriously or else it's not going to work. I can be specific. Uh, does he... Write in cursive or does he write in caps? Who writes in caps? People who are upset, people who are coaches of hockey teams. So we have to make the list with our specifics, 
send it out to the universe, burn it to ash, and then plant it. Whoa, that got dark. Why do you have to burn it to ash? Because it's private. And then we'll plant it. It's kismet. We just got a plant. Is it gonna grow out of your fake cilantro? It comes, you bump into him walking down the street or, you know, shuffling cards. Can you put some Enya on? Okay, I'm done. I'm gonna go first. So these are in no order of importance because they're all important and that's final. He's adopted, which I find very important because it just shows that he adapts well to other situations. He was very poor and then he made a lot of money working, maybe on Wall Street or something, and then he gave it all away because he's selfless. It's very rags to riches, to rags. He is handsome. But he has a limp. What, a limp? Why does he have a limp? Because it keeps him humble. She tells me this every day. Every day. I think it's backwards. I think that you should live women, with your best friend. Yeah, live with your best friend. And then go out of the house to see your husband. Exactly. So, so 